नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑन अवर कोर्स ऑन प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन एंड डेवलपमेंट इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी हैव सीन द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन एंड डेवलपमेंट टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी और वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट दैट इज द प्रोडक्ट लाइफ साइकिल वाई वी आर डिस्कसिंग द प्रोडक्ट लाइफ साइकिल because it has a strong bearing or strong influence on the product design and development in the last lecture if you remember we have just finished with the diagram of product life cycle so we have not considered the various phases of the product life cycle but today we will discuss that what are the various stages or phases of the product life cycle and we will try to understand that how these phases influence the various strategies the various decisions of any organization which is involved in producing products for making profits so let us go one by one and quickly try to understand the basic philosophy the basic decision making process based on the product life cycle now let us see this slide was shown yesterday also the product life cycle you can see is the course that a product sales and profits take over its lifetime we will see with the help of a diagram that how the product sales vary with respect to time and based on this time what are the various phases of product cycle or the product life cycle so we will try to understand that with the help of a diagram so first point is is the course or the trajectory that a product sales and profits take over its lifetime the second point is it shows the stages that products go through from development to the decline from the market so we need to understand somebody may question that what do you understand by product life cycle many a time student starts start answering from conceptualization of the idea then testing of the idea and then coming up with a concept design then detailed design of the products all those things are not considered in the life cycle life cycle is that the product is born it is developed and then it declines or maybe the sales of the product decline over a period of time it attains a maturity level means the sales of the product attains a maturity level and finally it declines or the sales or the profits related to the product decline so it is a starting phase is the development many a times in many different books you will find that the even development stage is not considered in the product life cycle basically they will show the introduction of the product into the market how the sales are affected during that stage then the growth of the demand or the growth of the sale how the sales are influenced at that particular time finally the maturity level and the decline so majorly it is the behavior of the product when it has been lost in the market and the trajectory is drawn based on the data that is the sales data or the revenue data or the profit data based on the product so let us quickly see that what are the various stages of or uh, the various phases of product life cycle but before going to that let us see one important slide that why do we need to study the product life cycle our course is on product design and development so why we need to understand the product life cycle so these are the few points which have been uh, you can say compiled for this purpose now plc or the product life cycle determines the revenue earned so suppose our revenue is declining over a period of time what do we need to do we need to have a relook at that product we need to redesign that product so that the revenues may increase no company wants to do business for losses so each company would like to make as much profit as possible and that is only possible if your revenue that you are earning from the product increases over a period of time but suppose your plc will Will help us that how much revenue we are earning and suppose during the drawing the product life cycle we see that the sales are declining the profits are going down at that time we need to take a very hard decision to either shelf that product to leave produ to stop the production of that particular product or to come up with a relatively new or a redesigned or a in innovative product to replace the old product for which the revenue is decreasing so point number 1 is plc determines the revenue earned in a way it helps us in decision making related to the product design second point contributes to strategic marketing planning 
so we need to see that how the sales are for the last 6 months for the last one year and it can help us to make our marketing plans the advertisement policy the discounts all those decisions can be taken based on the product life cycle next point it helps the firms or the companies or the organizations to identify when a product needs support, redesign, withdrawal, etc. So, it completely helps the companies to make a product policy that at what particular time interval they will withdraw the product from the market or they will launch a redesigned product in the market or they will support the product with some aggressive or proactive marketing policy like giving some discounts or giving some additional benefits to the customer. So, the product life cycle will help the company to identify all these things related to the timing of reintroduction of the product, related to the withdrawal of the product, related to the redesign of the product. So, therefore, also product life cycle becomes important for this course on product design and development because the redesigning part is coming into picture. I think I have told in the last class that there are two types of innovations, increment incremental innovation and breakthrough innovation. So, incremental innovations are always possible when why that the product life cycle will be able to tell us that when do we need to redesign our product. Next point on your screen, the product life cycle helps in planning for the new product development. So, the timing as well as the policy related to the new product can easily be decided based on the product life cycle. And the last point, see, last point is helps in forecasting and managing the cash flow. How this will help you? Because suppose you have a product life cycle, you know that initially the sales are maybe some number, maybe x. After 6 months, the sales are x plus delta x. After maybe uh, uh, 1 year or 1 and a half year, the sales are x plus 3 delta x. Now, when you know that how much is the demand in the market or how much is the sale in the market, you can make your policies, procurement policies of the raw materials which are being used for making the product accordingly and that will help you to manage your cash flow. So, it will help in forecasting also, it will help in managing the cash flow also. So, you can procure the materials, you can hire the people accordingly because you know that this is going to be the behavior of the product when it is going to be launched in the market. So, all these points and there can be additional points also that we may not be able to discuss because of the paucity of time. But these are the most important points which help us in decision making related to this topic or related to this uh, you can say overall product life cycle of a product. Now, in today's class our major focus is to understand that what are the various stages of product life cycle and what decisions we can take based on the various stages of this PLC. Now, the various phases, these are the most common phases in all the different books, you will find majorly these phases only. First is the product development, usually in the beginning of product life cycle, then the introduction or launch of the product into the market, then you have uh, growth, maturity and the decline. So, you have four you, uh, majorly five phases, but in most common product life cycles, you will see the four phases only or the four stages from introduction to the decline. So, let us see with the help of a diagram. On your screen, you can see a more simplistic diagram for the product life cycle. This is sales and profits on y axis and the time on the x axis. Similar diagram I have shown in lecture number 1 also. So, you can see first phase is product development, second stage is introduction growth, maturity and decline. So, you can see here red color graph, I think it is clear on your screen is for sales and the blue color graph is for the profits. So, clearly evident that during the development of the product, you do not make much profit. Therefore, you have a negative product, uh, you, uh, negative graph for the profits. But once the product is introduced into the market, the profits start to increase. And you can see there is an area in which the profits are maximum. This stage is when the product has reached the maturity stage. So, at the maturity stage, the profits are maximum. So, here we can see that introduction stage, the product 
starts to grow the sales of the product starts to grow and in the growth stage you see a incremental increase in the sales of the product and finally in the decline stage the product dies down the sales of the product completely dies down so we need to understand the importance of all these phases phase number 1 2 3 4 and 5 majorly we will focus on these four stages in this lecture because we are focusing on product life cycle the product development part maybe we will focus in the other lecture in which we will talk about the product development process in totality so today our focus will be on introduction growth maturity and decline so here you can see in the maturity stage the sales are maximum similarly the profits are also maximum so it is a kind of good feeling for the company when the product has achieve, achieved a maturity level but it is a it sends a word of caution also because after the maturity when your profits are maximum profits are maximum sales are also also maximum the product sales decline as well as the profits as evident also decline so our focus has to be in this area and of we have to take decisions accordingly so that we do not go into this declining stage and we come up with a innovative or a new product or advanced version of the existing product in order to maintain the supremacy in the market so let us see analyze each one of these stages one by one now first one is the product development stage we will just have a overview of this stage what happens in the product development stage there are new ideas market surveys are done product development and refinement test marketing is done analysis of the test marketing results and preparation for launch publicity and marketing campaign so more or less whatever product we have conceptualized we have done the initial design the detailed design the prototyping the testing most of the things are already done now in this stage we have maybe the market surveys the product development and refinement maybe initial test marketing is done for example many times you see with a magazine you get a very small sachet of a, a hair gel or a hair oil or a hair uh, shampoo and you just test it so that kind and then you can give your feedback online back to the company so that kind of test marketing is done in order to understand that how the customers are uh, accepting this product in the market or how they are reacting to a new product in the market so all the that is done during the product development stage and you can see analysis of the test marketing result the example that i have given you the feedback that is received from the customers is analyzed during the test marketing results and finally when you get good reviews for the product it is then asked uh, maybe it is then launched into the market and then the real test of the product starts as soon as it enters a completely new market so this is product development stage and in one of our lectures in week number 1 only we will focus on the product development process and we will see what are the important stages for designing a new product and in that we will see that how a idea is conceptualized what are the problem areas related to the idea generation then how the ideas are tested for various criteria and then how the prototyping is done and finally how the product is launched into the market so all those answers we will try to find out during the product development process and it will it is a long process and i have told you that in many cases it may take maybe 6 years to 15 years for the complete product to be developed and launched in the market but right now we are considering that the product or the prototype is already ready and we are now launching going to launch it into the market and then plot the sales of the product with respect to time in the product life cycle and each stage is going to give us some input related to our decision making regarding the design of the product so let us quickly see Uh, the second stage that is the introduction or launch so we already have the technology for producing the product we have done the test marketing and finally we are launching the product in the market now let us see what do we do in the introduction or in the introduction stage what are the factors to be taken care of or how to take a decision related to uh, the product life cycle in launching of the product so first thing is introduction of the product into the market it is evident i have told you already it may be a new product or an old product to the new market so sometimes there may be product for example these days the economies have opened up there are multinational products entering into different countries so maybe 
a taking example of India, we may not be using a particular brand of car or a particular model of a car. So, the company is already launched, has already launched number of car models, but may, there may be a new model which that company is bringing to India which was not being used here and but that model was already existing in some other countries. So, when that is being launched that will fall under the old product, the product is new to India, but it is a old product of the company and it is into the new market. So, Indian market is a new market for that product of the car. So, sometimes a company may be coming up with a completely new product, the company has designed a product, it has fabricated, modeled, tested and it is being launched. So, all situations different product life cycles will be there. If it is a new product, the product life cycle will be drawn for that, maybe some data will be required to draw the life cycle. Why? Because in this point it is important to understand that we are plotting the sales data. So, there should be some input regarding the sales data. If you try to understand that if we are drawing a product life cycle for a specific product which has been launched in 200, 2015. So, in January 2017, we have the data of sales of that product which was launched in January 2015. So, two year data is available with us. So, based on that two year data, we can draw a product life cycle that how the sales have varied for the last two years. Similarly, the com same company is going to launch a similar type or a modified version of that product. So, they already have the data of two years that how the product has behaved in the market. So, all that data is useful to us when we are going to draw a product life cycle for a new product. And then we can as we have seen there was a word which is very important in product in production planning and control that is forecasting. So, we can make use of that uh, forecast that how the product is going to behave based on the PLC of a similar product which has already been launched and we have the actual sales data for that product. So, that will be helpful to us in our decision making related to managing our cash flow and other things. So, you can see we in the introduction stage, we may be launching a new product and or an old product, but into a completely new market. So, in this case, the demand is going to be low. If you have seen the diagram, let me go back to the diagram. You can see introduction stage, the demand or the sales is low. So, this completely explains that the demand is low. Then the cost is high, high cost. For any product, if you see, especially in electronics market, when you have new products, you have products like mobile phones. All of us have experienced this. Whenever a new mobile phone is launched, the product cost is high. But over a period of time, the cost is then stabilizes and even comes down. So, during the introduction stage, the cost is high sales are low sorry as it is clear. Advertisement and promotion is done very vigorously and then we, the companies monitor the initial sales of the product. There may be teething troubles, there may be a software problem in the product, there may be some service requirements in the very initial stage of the product. So, all these are the characteristics of the introduction stage which we need to understand in a product life cycle. So, once again I will read it for you. So, in the introduction stage, introduction of a new product into the market, it may be a new product or old product to the new market. I have tried to explain with the help of a car example. Then the demand is low in this period, high costs are there for the product, advertisement and promotion is foremost and most important part and then the company usually monitors the initial sales of the product in order to take the decisions related to how vigorously they need to advertise and market the product in the market. And these are the uh, summary of characteristics and objectives. You can say sales are low, costs are high profits are negative as we have seen in the diagram and then the marketing objectives are create product awareness and trial. So, we have seen stage number 1 that is product development, stage number 2 that is introduction and launch. Now, let us go to the third stage that is growth. Now, US, you, if you remember the product life cycle, in the growth stage the sales increase and when the sales will increase, automatically the profits will also increase. So, let us see what are the characteristics. In this period, this period is the time to improve the efficiency and product availability as well as service. So, when the sales are increasing, it means there is demand in the market. So, we need to ensure the product availability as well as the service that if there are some initial problems, they may be tackled and the product 
performs reliably because the product the in, in the growth stage by word of mouth the auto marketing is also done and many people may like to adopt this new product which has been launched in the market so service also is important availability of the product is also important and it is a time to improve the efficiency i am emphasizing on the time to improve the efficiency because we will be discussing in week 2 the value concept of value engineering or the value engineering principles as applied to product design the, at that point this thing will become all the more important that why do we need to improve the efficiency of the product during the growth stage and there i will explain that it is important because the competition will start to set in and here also you will see sales growth rate increases because of limited or no competition but as soon as the growth stage reaches its pinnacle value or the highest value the competition sets to set in or it comes up the, the other companies also venture into the similar area and therefore there is competition at the end of the growth stage during the growth stage there is no competition and therefore the sales uh, sales increase unilaterally so first thing is this is a period or this is the time to improve the efficiency and product availability as well as service so improve efficiency we will discuss during value engineering cost efficiency time to market pricing and discount policies are the major factors in gaining the customer confidence so all these four parameters the cost efficiency as compared to the competitors time to market means suppose today i want to buy a motor bike there was a monopolistic type of uh, business environment few years back if you want to buy a bike you have to go just book the bike you may get it after 2 months but that is not the scenario today a customer wants the bike if he goes he makes the payment through check or through transfer he wants the bike at the same moment only so the time to market has become very very important that the company should be able to satisfy the demand of the customer there and then only if he comes to the showroom and he wants to buy the bike the bike should be available there so that is the time to market has to be minimum similarly the pricing and discount policies of the company also play an important role during the growth stage suppose the company is not able to tap the increase in the sales volume then or the demand that the product has created because of the success at the introduction stage the growth will only come if the product is successful during the introduction stage now suppose the product fails during the introduction stage there are many problems related to the product the product sales will never increase during the growth stage so all those things if the product has satisfied all the requirements the specifications and it has tested positive for the customer's requirement only then we will go to the growth stage and once we are into the growth stage in order to maintain that increase in the growth we need to satisfy the pricing and the discount policies so that that trajectory that the product sales have taken after the introduction stage continues for a longer period of time so the second point is very very clear these are the parameters or the factors or the criteria to be taken care of during the growth stage then the increased customer awareness we have to ensure that that is a marketing strategy the sales growth rate increases because of limited or no competition which i have already told that there is no competition usually during the growth stage there's uh, but as soon as you reach the top point of the growth stage there may be some competition which may start to set in then the revenue also increases so we have seen the profit graph also deliberately we have drawn the sales and the profit graph in order to justify the increase in the revenue so when the sales will increase the revenue earned will also increase so most of the companies want their product to be always in the growth stage because the revenue is high the cost that we the price that we can keep can be high because of the many because of the monopolistic nature okay so this is growth uh, that is a phase 3 so this is summary of growth phase sales you can see sales rapidly rising cost cost per customer is average so the costs usually should come down during the growth stage as we will we are going to reinvent our uh, pricing policies during this period profits are rising and marketing objective should be to maximize the market share by proper advertisements and by giving proper customer awareness so this is stage 3 
and then the last uh, fourth stage not the last last stage is decline the fourth stage is the maturity stage in maturity this period is the period of the highest returns from the product because if you remember if you have seen the product life cycle uh, with a little bit of interest you will see the top portion is the highest sale and that comes during the maturity stage so the sales are highest therefore the profits that we gain are also highest sales reach the peak so highest sales at the maturity level marketing cost of the product declines now the company uh, customers have already got all the information related to the product so the company does not want to do too much of aggressive marketing and they want to stick with increasing the efficiency of making the product increasing the effectiveness of converting the raw materials into the final products so they are not much bothered about the marketing because the marketing is already from the word of mouth at the maturity stage so marketing cost of the product declines ratio of revenue to cost is high yes that is true sales growth likely to be low because sales growth is merely constant only the top you have reached the top portion so your sales growth is likely to be low competition likely to be greater as i have told you after the growth stage the competition in starts to set in the competition increases during the maturity stage and the company needs to monitor the market changes and you can see there is a question mark here they have to think of the new strategies why because the sales have reached the top point and for a period of time there is no increase further in the sales so the company has to rethink their strategies now they have to see that at what point of time they should withdraw the product from the market or at what point of time they should launch a new product into the market so that again they go into the growth stage and start making profit so although the profits are maximum here you can see the ratio of revenue to cost is high and the highest returns are there during this phase but because of the competition many a times the organizations or the companies will have to compromise on their profit component they may have to come up like most of the times we see 1 plus 1 free or 2 plus 1 free or maximum up to 50% discount so what the companies are doing they are trying to compromise on their profit to keep their sales high so at that point we need to think very strategically that should we continue with the same product for which the sales have almost become stagnant or we should try to launch a new product or design a new product so that we are able to further push the sales of the product or further increase the revenue with the existing product by a little bit of redesigning or repackaging or rethinking so we need to at that time develop our strategy accordingly so this is the most important phase and the new strategy development or the new product development is most important during this stage then the summary of the maturity phase sales are at its peak costs are low per customer profits are high and marketing objectives so we maximize the profits while defending the market share so that is you can see marketing objective we need to maximize the profits while defending the market share so if we do not have proper pricing policies if we do not have proper decision making related to the product there may be chances that our market share may fall down and it generally happens that we can see in the last stage that is decline stage so if we are not careful enough to plan our strategy according according to the market environment the sales are definitely going to go down and if the sales are going to go down what else is start will also go down the profit curve will also start to go down so in the decline stage the competitors enter the market with better product features what does that mean the company has a better product design and therefore we are talking of the features so our product is facing competition from the product of the competitors so they may have come up with the advanced technology they may have come up with the reduced prices therefore our the sales of our product are now falling flat or are coming down sales start declining 
as I have already said, marketing cost of product increases, rises and decision to withdraw may be, may be dependent on availability of new products and whether the fashion trends will come around again. So, in case of, in, in many cases, we have, we know that the fashions may come again or trends may come again. So, this may be related to one particular segment of industry, but in most of the cases, if the, if the product sales decline, the company has to rejig their product or redesign their product product or reinvent their product in order to be competitive in the market. So, there are number of strategies that the company has to adopt at various stages of the product, product life cycle. So, let us see now the decline phase, sales declining, costs low cost per customer, it, it was achievable in the maturity stage also, profits also starts to decline and marketing objectives are reduce the expenditure and milk the brand. So, maybe just they want to take advantage of the brand value and keep the product in the market, but the sales are not increasing. So, the sales are declining. Last is the strategies based on the product life cycle. So, we have seen that there are four or five important stages in the product life cycle and at each stage we can have different types of policies or strategies. But maybe since we are talking of a product that is our course is on product design and development, therefore we can see based on the product at the introduction stage they usually companies offer the basic product. During the growth stage, they offer the product extension, service, warranty. In the maturity stage, they diversify the brands or the models, maybe redesign, reinvent the design. And during the decline stage, they phase out the weak products. Maybe they whatever products are not performing well can be phased out and whatever products are performing well, they can be redesigned, reinvented or certain incremental innovations can be used to get the product again into the wish list of the customers. So, these are the four you can say stage wise strategies related to the product. Similarly, the marketing and advertisement people can take care of the other four criteria that is the price, the distribution, the advertisement or the advertising and the sales promotion. So, this may be the marketing policy of any organization, but related to the product, these are the decisions which any engineer or engineering professional has to take in the company. So, in today's class, we have seen in detail the product life cycle, what are the various stages of the product life cycle and what are the important decisions, characteristics, objectives at each stage of the product life cycle. Our focus in the next class would be the product development process and the selection of profitable products and how or what criteria we should keep in mind when we are going to come up with the product ideas and how those products success can be ensured by using a systematic planning as well as uh, execution. So, with this we come to an end of today's lecture. So, we will discuss maybe the product development process in our next lecture. Thank you.